Howdy, it's Tubal King again, also known as Mr. Pete 222. This is a three part video. This is part two. In part one, and go back and watch that if you haven't already, I made these 3D printed foundry patterns, a pair of them, from which I cast aluminum molds. Now, these molds are used to cast lead weights for decoys, duck decoys. So I made three of these and I'm going to choose the two best and cut off the sprues here, the gates, and uh, join them together with alignment pins and then I have to enlarge this sprue hole and put a little funnel. There's just a lot of cleanup work to do on it and that's what will be in this part two video. And be sure and watch part three when available. And I think I'll start by cutting off the gates. Wear your safety glasses and work safely in your shop. There we are, one, two, and three, and now I'll do a little uh, band sanding. There's something I missed. Okay, I'm back from the belt sander, and I examined all three of these because I'm trying to select the two best out of the three, because castings certainly vary. And this particular one here, I don't know why, but there is a bit of warpage. Now, I lightly sanded that, as I did the other two, and that could be sanded more later in salvage, or even a very light coat, but I didn't want to do that. And I do know that if you buy a lead sinker mold at uh, Kmart or someplace, they're only semi-accurate, so it doesn't really matter. I just don't want the lead to leak out of there. So, this one is just going to be set aside for now, because these two are... This one is very flat, and that is the, the oddball that I poured in that round flask that had the two gates on it. So why that one happens to be the flattest, I don't know. And I could make another one, but I don't intend to. This one has a little bit of rock to it. Can you see that? And I am on the surface plate here. All right, enough on that. What I want to do now is to drill the two alignment pins. And, you know, in the past I've always gone with quarter inch, but I'm going to go a little larger with five sixteenths, I believe, on this. And those are just the, the pins that, that will align the two and hold them together as they're poured. And I want to do that before I drill and enlarge this hole. And I hope that my uh, uh, patterns were accurate enough, and mo I'm concerned here, was was this sprue truly in the center of the egg? And I think it is. And so what I'm going to do here is to pick, remember this is a, a core print, so that we'll have a hole already formed in the lead egg. So this is a piece of eighth inch wooden dowel. I'm going to just lay that in there, and that is my alignment, I think. Now I need to transfer those holes to the front side here. See, that pretty much holds it this way. This way. And as far as th this direction, I'm just going to line up those two half circles and hope that's okay. Always trying to remember that this is only a uh, lead sinker that's going to go in the muck and the pollution of the backwaters of the Illinois River. Should have used a brass hammer. These 
do not skate off of a punch the way a regular ball peen does. I drilled two quarter inch holes but just in one piece. Why didn't I go all the way through? That's just the way I work. You know you can do it any way you want as if anyone's gonna make one of these but anyway there's the wooden dowel. Wipe that clean and I'm gonna clamp it again with those two aligned the best I can and hope it works out. Now let me talk a little bit about vice grips real, really uh, right now. Does anyone own one of these as opposed to this? Now this is the 11R which is about 11 inches by the way. This is the 12LG, a little uh, known uh, version of this. But anyway, why am I even telling you that? Well, because now when I clamp this to drill it, let me tighten that up a little bit, like that, it doesn't uh, <clears throat> extend down so much. Now I'll still have to set this on a couple wooden blocks to space it, but look at the difference here, you know, if I use this. And I do like these, and I have several of them in each size, so don't... And some have the pads right here. But I'm going to use this one. Maybe if I turn it upside down, it would take even less room. I don't know, but... i got to line that a little bit better. And then I'm going to drill a quarter inch all the way through. Ultimately, I'm going to ream these 5 sixteenths. And after I drill one, I will put in just to just stick that in to hold the alignment. Although it shouldn't move with the vice grips on there. There it is, ready to go. And you just see I've got two pieces of hard maple there. And that's how I will drill it, straddling the vice grips. As long as I'm talking about vice grips, I'll have a little show and tell here now that that these large C-clamp type uh, were available also in a smaller version. And notice that's when they went to Irwin. And it was available with these pads on here, these swivel pads, which I like. Irwin. Those were sad days, I think. But also this one, and these are really handy. Get yourself some. And they came in a smaller size. That I got used, I can't read it. Here's one I've had for several years. I have no idea what it's for, but I got it just in case I need it. Alrighty, they're reamed 5 sixteenths. This is 5 sixteenths rod. I can separate them. I wonder where this is made. All right. Now, and I went all the way through because I try to avoid blind holes, but looking back at one of my other uh, molds, and you've seen that I have many of these, that's only quarter inch pins, but what happens sometimes as I'm pouring lead in these, everything's so hot you can't touch it and you're banging it around and sometimes these come loose so what I'm gonna do this time is to drill little holes and put a set screw in there so they can't move also these don't need to be that long that's a troublesome and a pain and I will be putting these little uh, oh I don't know what you call these notches but the purpose of that is to help me later on to pry the two halves apart if I need to if they don't come apart readily they probably will with something that's uh, semi-spherical, elliptical actually. So, do you see the game plan? Can we talk? Now, there's been much uh, controversy over American-made and foreign-made, and I see that this one is just old enough. I remember when I bought it where it's still made in USA, but I think they're all foreign-made now. But we got to get over it. These companies are never coming back. I don't care what happens, they aren't coming back. And we have to, to some extent, accept the foreign goods, especially when they're quality foreign goods. Maybe the quality is gone, I don't know. But uh, 
that that's my take on it. I'm criticized sometimes for buying something foreign, but you know, just try buying uh, one of these that's made in USA, other than you. But I'm a, ch a champion of being the secondhand rose. All right, enough of that little rant. All right, I made two of these pins. That's five sixteenths. There's just a little bit of a taper and a chamfer on there because you don't want them to bind. I did indeed drill and tap two ten twenty four screws holes. And I'll just snug those up because I'm sure they'll come out ten times. Just snug it. And do they go together? Yeah, they do. You see, I don't want them binding when I've got gloves on or I'm, uh, you know, they're just 600 degrees. It's just a real pain in the neck. So. All right, it's starting to shape up. I think the next thing I will do is to go over to the milling machine, but it could be done in the in the drill press too, and re-drill these holes. Now, what size? What size? I have decided three eighths, and I'm not going to go all the way into the egg. I'm going to go about this deep. Why? Because I want uh, the metal to flow in fast. I don't care if it's neck down a little bit because then in the end when I saw it off there's less to saw and a file and it does not have to be a uh, very uh, very well done, very smooth. It just doesn't matter on a weight. If you've ever examined a sash weight, how many of you know what a sash weight is? You'll be amazed at how crude they are because it didn't matter. There was no need to refine them. So I'll put this over in the mill, or maybe I'll do it in the drill press. I haven't decided yet, but I'll, I'll put these together like that, and I'll mark this or, or set my depth stop and, and drill it. I'm going to do that right now. I decided to use the drill press. and the funnel. Well, I'm making progress here. And that's what it looks like when I drilled the, uh, the 3 8 hole. Just a little bit of deburring to do. And I did talk before about maybe later on I will need to clean this up a little bit with abrasive because, it, remember, it was 3D printed, therefore the layers, and I did it in a rather coarse uh, version, you know, so so it printed fast. So it's, it's not very good. This, I, I mentioned in the other one, I probably should have filled that a little bit, smeared some body putty, but I didn't. This could be clean, but it sure would be laborious, and I was looking at some of the products I've got here, and I do have some of these, but I think that on a Dremel would probably tear it up. But I may use these later on, but I'm going to see how they pour first. The next thing I do here, and I'm just about ready for some sample pours, but I have to get everything laid out, and that would be, um, there we go here. Some of these grooves. Now I put four in here because this was large enough to I remember I had to rock it sometimes. But this one uh, doesn't have very many, uh, well it has some sharp corners so it was hard to get apart sometimes. It really had a bang on it. I think you'll even see bang marks. So I'll go over to the milling machine and put on this one. Probably using a half inch and it will go about an eighth inch deep. Something like that. Here we go. Next, while I'm still at the bridge port, I'm going to mill off the bottom so it'll set flat. In other words, we still have pattern draft on there, which isn't uh, needed right now. I don't care about the other three sides, so I'll just mill this off reasonably flat and uh, I think the job is done.
Just a little bit of deburring on the Rockwell sander. Alright, that concludes this part two video. Going from this to this to what I hope is the finished mold. Now join me next time in the uh, third episode of this series where I take this for a test rides, see what it, uh, how it does, and uh, do I need to make some modifications or is it ready to, to use as is. So, hope you enjoyed it. And this method of what I've showed you here could be used to make uh, lead sinkers for fishing or you know just a lot of other things as well even tin soldiers if you got the know-how in uh, Fusion 360 so uh, thanks for watching and be sure and watch Tubal Cain in his further adventure so long for now